Hi everyone, this is Doge from Medit Academy. In the previous lecture, we learned about human computation and we said human computation is a discipline concerned with the design, evaluation and implementation of interactive computing systems for human use and with the study of major phenomena surrounding them. In this lecture, we will be talking about the human, which of course are the users of the system. After all, the women are the ones who will design the computing system for. So it is important for us to first understand the woman who is our first priority in order to know the kind of system we are going to design for them, since the women are the users of the system. The woman, as we all know, interact with the environment through various inputs and output channels. So information is being received and is being, is being received and is being processed also by woman. So we have the future way of receiving the information in which we use our eyes, also the auditory in which we use our ears, also the haptic in which we use our skin to feel, the temperature and other things, also the movement in which we use to respond to stimuli that we perceive, also the information stored in memory. We have three types of memory, we have the sensory memory, we have the short term memory and we have the long term memory. But as time goes on, we will look at these three types of memory. Also, the information is processed and applied. The woman is capable of reasoning, is capable of problem solving, and has skills. And woman, of course, we know that woman is capable of making some errors sometimes. Also, emotion influences woman's capabilities. As we all know, what is going on around us influences our decision making. Also, each person is different from another. So now we'll be talking about the vision since we talked that about vision about receiving uh, communicating with our environment. So the first one is the vision. The human vision is highly complex activities with wide range of physical and perpetual limitations. Yet it's important for us to know that it is the primary source of information for average person. It is the primary source of information for average vision. And vision occurs in two stages. The first one is the physical reception of stimulus, and the second is the processing and interpretation of the stimulus. First, we receive the stimulus, then the second, we process it and interpret it with our brain. When we look at something, that is when we receive the stimulus. But when we process it, okay, this is a television, that's when we are processing it and interpreting what we have seen, what we are the stimulus we have received what we are we are interpreting it to what it means so as we all know fission begins with light and the eye the human eye is a mechanism for receiving the light and transforming it into electrical energy so when we, the human eye receives the light it is not being transformed into electrical energy in order for us to possess it so the light in which the human eyes receive reflects from the objects in which we see or we are looking at and it is important to know that images are focused upside down in the retina this is the retina right here then it is important to know that the retina contains rods for low light low light vision and cones for color vision i will explain those two the rod first of all is highly sensitive to light and therefore allow us to see under low level illumination when we are in a darkened room this world is responsible for us to see at least we can see few things however they are unable to resolve fine detail and are subject to light saturation so this is the reason for temporary blindness when we get out from a darkened room into twilight i'm sure you have experienced shows before in which you get out from a darkened room into sunlight, you will experience temporary blindness. So the rod is is what is active has been active and have been saturated by the sodium light. That is what is responsible for the temporary blindness. Also, the cones is second type of receptor in the eye. So they are less sensitive to light, unlike the rods. So they are less sensitive to light and can therefore tolerate more light like the words so the cones there are three different types with three different with different wavelengths of lights 
So this allows for color vision. This process enables us to detect the colors. So also the ganglion cells is also in the retina as is a specialized light lab and uh, they are of two types the ganglion cells are of two types the first one is the L cells and the second one is the Y cells the L cells which are concentrated in the fovea are responsible for early detection of pattern the fovea enables us to detect pattern also the Y cells no, I said the ganglion are of two types, the S cells and the Y cells. The Y cells, which are of more widely distributed in the retina and are responsible for early detection of movement. So the first one, which is the L cells, is, is for detecting pattern and the Y cells is for detecting movement in the retina. Both of them are in the retina. So the distribution of these cells means that why we will not be able to detect changes in pattern in peripheral vision, we can perceive movement. Sometimes we may not be able to detect changes in pattern. For example, let's say there is a stick catching fire, then we are now waving it in a circular motion. Sometimes we may just detect a circle, a moving circle, but it is a dot making a round point is a dot moving in a circular position but our eyes is not able to catch up with the speed so sometimes it's occurred so this is done sometimes we can perceive the movement but we cannot detect the change that is going on also apart from detecting the images so the human eyes also is able to perceive the size and depth and also distances from which the object is found from us. So in order to understand this, we must be able, in order to understand how the images, how the eyes is able to perceive the size and depth, we must understand, this, uh, we must understand how image is appear in the retina or on the retina. So the size of the image is specified by the visual angle. The visual angle indicates how, more, how much of your object occupies. So in order for us to know the visual angle, we will draw a line from the top of the object to the center of the eye and also from the bottom of the object to the center of the eye. So this, that's how we get our visual angle here. So for the a straight line from the top of the object to the center of the eye and a straight line from the bottom of the object to the center of the eye, that's how we get the visual angle. And also, the visual acuity is uh, is ability to perceive detail. So the size of that of, of an object is specified as visual angle. Also, familiar objects perceive as constant size in spite of changes in visual angle when far away. When we are familiar with a car, even when it is uh, a way that is very small in our eyes, we know that we can say this is size of the car. Though when we are far from the car. The car may seem small, but because we are familiar with the car, we know that this is the actual size of the car and provides us cue like overlapping air position of size and depth. But because of familiarity, we can judge even based on distance according to that this is the size of the car. Also, the eyes is able to perceive color. The eyes is able to perceive color. So color a color in the eyes usually regarded as being made up or made up of three components. Color is made up of three components. The first one is the if, the second one is the intensity, and the third one is the saturation. The if is talking about the spectral wavelengths of the light. And for our primary colors, we have blue as the short wavelength, the green as medium wavelength, and the red as the long wavelength. But by feeling maybe two of these three, we can perceive the uh, can perceive in the region of about seven million different colors. Also, the intensity is talking about the brightness of color, and saturation is talking about the amount or the amount of brightness. Also, it's very important for us to know that around the world. Is, there is about 8% of male and 1% of females who suffer from color blindness. They are unable to discriminate between red and green. 
Also, the high passive color because of the cones are sensitive to light of different wavelengths. The previous slide I have explained about the cones and the rod. So, there are three types of cones, each sensitive to a different color. That is the primary color blue, green, and red. You know, the other colors are formed from the primary colors. Also, reading. So far, we have concentrated on perception of images in general. But, however, the perception and possessing of text is a special case that is important to us in human computer interaction. So, in this session, we'll be looking at the reading. So, as we all know, reading occurs in three stages. This first one is the visual pattern of the word on the page which is perceived, the visual pattern of the word. Then, it is then decoded with internal representation of the language. It is decoded with internal representation of the language. And the final stage is of the language is the language processing in which it includes the syntactic and semantic analysis, analysis and operates on phases of sentence on phrases of sentence during reading the eyes make jerky movements called the circuit the eye involves circuits which is a jerky movement followed by physicians physicians period occurs Perceptions occur during fixation period, which accounts for approximately 5% of the time elapsed. The eyes, as you know, can make certain movements when reading in order for us to focus on the image and other things. So it amounts to 94% of the time elapsed. The eyes move backward and forward the test in what we know as regression. So regression is the movement when the eyes move backward and forward over the test. It's what we know as regression. And if the test is complex than we think, then there will be more regression. Also, the word shape is important for recognition. The shape of the word is important for recognition. When I'm looking at, let's say, nine, number nine, it may be a nine to me but when it is look at the other direction in which the shape has changed it will be like number six so the word shape is important to record for recognition so it is important to know the shape so sometimes nine may seem like six depending on the direction i'm looking at so that's why the word shape is important for recognition also negative contrast improve reading from the screen so that is a, a, the dark character when we talk about the negative contrast, dark characters on the light screen. That's why most times we use we we type using black letters on the white background. Provides it provides us with higher luminance and therefore increase our accuracy than positive contrast. Imagine this font is something like white and the background is also white. We will not able to read the test of this thing. So this in turn will, but negative contrast increase our legibility. So if you have any question, please drop it at the comment section. And thank you for watching. And please do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.